Hi, I'm AJ Marks. And I'm Megan Silaginto. And you're listening to the season finale of American Idiots Abroad. Hi, welcome back to American Idiots Abroad. Hi. I'm AJ Marks. This is Megan Silaginto. As we mentioned. And we are both Americans living in the UK, and that's what this podcast is about. Yeah. I am originally from San Jose, California. Ooh, cool. Ooh. Uh, AJ's from... Um... I'm from Boston. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, I thought you were trying to think of it. No, 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 oh, no, okay. no, no. I wanted. To, I was trying to think of like a way to like include the accent somehow into what I was talking about. Boston. Yeah. No, but I didn't want to say Boston. I want to be like, AJ's from... Then I realized that's just, not what people sound no, like. No, not yeah. at all. No, not at all. <laughs> but anyway, today we have another East Coaster. It's more pleasure here in the house. It's good to be with you, Woo. AJ and Megan. And Mo is calling from the other side of London. Mo, thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh, it's a pleasure. So, AJ, did you park your car at the party? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the car park was full, mate. So, <laughs> Mate! <laughs> I also said car park instead of... I know! Who are you? Oh, well, this is You're how, so hybrid. Yeah, Britain has corrupted us. <laughs> Mo, do you want to let the people know what you do? And where you're from? What do I do and where am I from? Well, I am from New Haven, Connecticut, and um, actually Guilford, Connecticut, which is cool because they have a Guilford, England. Over yes, there. they do. Mm-hmm. They have a Guilford, New Hampshire, too. Oh. Guilford, New Hampshire, North, North Carolina, there's a few more. Yeah, they just named but, everything uh, what they were already <laughs> living in. Just, just yeah. all Guilford. Yeah. I'm actually a musician, producer, uh, entrepreneur of sorts, you know, so I'm here in, in London for the last four years, just kind of building my little brand over here and doing a lot of production. And, and you know, over the years, it's been a lot of, uh, it's been like a like 35-year career, actually, maybe even a little longer, but uh, starting with Ray Charles and going on through um, lots of jazz acts and, you know, Natalie Cole and Roberta Flack and all that stuff. And then, you know, Earth, Wind & Fire for 10 years as music director and on there to Casual. Janet Jackson. Yeah. And, Janet, oh, yeah, I didn't know about you know, Janet. That's cool. Janet, um, Christina Aguilera, Maxwell. And, uh, and MJ, Donald. right? And MJ. Yeah. What era of Christina Aguilera? 2010. I was there like <gasps> uh, right oh. before The Voice. So like she actually, I, she must have been creating The Voice while we were actually working together. Mm. You know? mm. um, because um, the tour I was supposed to do with her did not even happen. We did a lot of television and, um, you know, rehearsal on television and all that. And then the tour was changed because she did uh, a movie. Uh, was it? Burlesque. Uh, was it burlesque? No. I think it, I, I think it was burlesque. You were on the This Is It movie. I was. I was absolutely yes. I was a keyboardist in, in, on uh, Michael's last band, and uh, yeah, that was a journey. We'll get into that in private. I'm sure. <laughs> uh. <All right>. cool. <laughs> but for now, for now, we're going to get into the topic of today. So today we're going to be talking about the British household, houses, and being in them, and everything about them. And what's going on in there? We should start with the most sacred part of any household, which is the bathroom, or as they call it here, the toilet. Yes. Yes, I thought you were going to say tea kettle. (laughs) (laughs) That's actually very true. That is the essential part of a British household. Oh, yeah, you better have that. I don't know many people that refer to it as the loo. Mm -hmm. I do. I do sometimes. It just sounds silly. Well, I feel like, so for me, I don't know about you, Mo, but when I first came here and I heard everyone calling it the toilet, I was very taken aback because for an American, that seems quite rude, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, you're supposed um, to say the porcelain throne. To talk about the toilet. Home. Back home, we'd be like, uh, where's the bathroom? You know, it's always bathroom, you know, but mm-hmm. the is we're not going there to take a bath. We're not resting either. I say the loo a lot because, you know, I mean, I may not say it at, you know, some really posh event or something. Yes. At a pub, yeah. The loo, where is it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes I'll do it. Like, if I'm at a restaurant, I'll be like, uh, excuse me, where's your loo? And mm-hmm. no one looks at me sideways, which is good. Because just the <laughs> toilet thing. Like, I'm used to it now in some ways, but I do feel weird saying, like, oh, I'm going to go put my makeup on in the toilet. <laughs> oh, like, <laughs> yeah, gonna... earlier you were looking for a comb and I said, you can probably find one in the toilet. Yeah. That just sounds weird. Yeah, to an American, they'd be like, excuse me? (laughs) What are you trying to say? I thought that people would call it the water closet because I thought that Britain was more like... The WC. Like mainland Europe. 
Yeah, definitely not. They're like no. basically trying not to be. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So something I just learned is it's in the UK, it's actually illegal to have a power outlet within three meters of the shower or the bath, which is probably why you never see or you rarely see power outlets in bathrooms here. Only for shavers. But then like in the US, building codes actually require outlets to be within three feet of the sink basin. What? Which is so weird, and you can tell I'm reading this off of a website. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but it's like just from the just from the uh, the delivery. The style. delivery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah is that wild? It is a safety first. Yeah, thing. but it's like mixed messages. Like, which one is the most safe? You know. I tell you, I love the outlets here because. They, got, they have switches on them. It took, you know, mm. it takes you a while to get used to them because you plug your phone in, you think it's charging, and you forget yeah. <laughs> yeah. the switch. You know. We've all but been also, there. <laughs> we've all been there. That plug, that actual receptacle, is so when you plug it in there, it's in there. Yeah. There's no way it's going to be, like, kicked out or something like that. They definitely have the best. Oh, yeah, because the American ones are so so flimsy. I've, oh, I've yeah. forgotten. Sometimes they'll, like, loosen over time, and it'll just yeah. kind of, like, hang Oh, yeah, and slightly. it just won't work anymore. Yeah. I totally forgot about that. I forgot about, about that. that. You're totally right, yeah. Yeah, so for our American listeners, there are different power outlets here, and they're not like the um, Europe power outlets. They have their own uh, British one. They're huge. They're three-pronged. Three-pronged. And they're like, like, like huge. They're only do, ever three-pronged. I've seen some things that are two-pronged, but it's very rare. Oh. Yeah. I didn't even know that they made them. Yeah, it's very rare. I, I don't understand the point. I'm just like, make it with three prongs. What you doing? But you're totally right. And then ab- about all that you just said, like, I've definitely had it where I've desperately needed my phone to charge, plugged it in, like, yeah. ran off to go do things, and then came back and realized that I had not turned the outlet on. Yeah. I know. Yeah, they have little switches <laughs> because they have more voltage in these power outlets. So they have little switches just so that you're like not wasting power. Yeah. To So it's just not like putting anything through unless you have the power on it. It yeah. is. I travel the world and I don't I don't see that too many places. I mean, you know. That's yeah. true, actually. Uh, yeah. So it's very helpful unless you're my grandmother. And it, like, she, <laughs> I remember one time she was talking about how it was again about her phone charging. And she was like, it's been plugged in all day and it hasn't charged at all. Oh. And she was literally sitting there for at least an hour watching it, waiting for oh. it to turn oh on. Oh, my God. And I was like, oh. Oh, <laughs> I, bless. I, I don't know how to break this to Shout out, Jilda. <laughs> Shout out, Jilda. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you knew which grandmother. <laughs> it's on stage, even. You know, like, it's, it adds another step to the troubleshooting process. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's not working. What is it? Well, it could be the app. It could be the cord. It could be the cord going into the app. I give up. I don't know what it is. And then someone goes up to the wall and goes, click. <laughs> <laughs> I totally know that feeling. Warning to any Americans that come over here. Most phones are fine now, but the voltage is higher than in the U.S. So Your I... phones charge faster. Yes, but I plugged it in to an outlet once and then it just zapped my phone. First world problems, starring Megan. <laughs> you know, I plugged some speakers in one time and was like, oh, and I just yeah. saw the smoke coming out. It was just a, it was a dumb moment. I just. Yeah, yeah, that sucks, but that must have been cool to see. I mean, so oh, it was kind of. Like, <laughs> yeah, I lost like a $300 pair, uh, dollar pair of speakers. <laughs> yeah, the coolest moment. <laughs> in, but you lost them in the coolest way. Yeah. It's not like I someone guess. stole them from you. That sounds like something out of a sitcom or like, yeah. yeah. I was going to say also in the bathroom, uh, they have towel warmers here. Yeah. If you live in a nice new place, they'll have towel warmers and you feel well fancy. It's a common thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's weird too, because you know, there, you would think something like towel warmers because there is, there is a certain environmental awareness here about certain things. Like back in the States, we have dryers, we have washers and dryers mm-hmm. and over here there's no dryers. Yeah. Um, so annoying. So <laughs> annoying. Look at you. Oh, it is where people will look at you like you like club the seal or something and say, oh yeah, I'm going to dry my clothes in a dryer. And they're so also they're like, usually found in the kitchen as well. But the, in terms of um, the towel warmers, now that's kind of a little bit of, um, I don't know, you're wasting a little bit of fuel there when you're not like... Yeah! See, my thing is, is we're all hypocrites. So, yeah. yeah, we all just need to shout it out. So I'm calling you out, Britain. We're all calling you out right now. I would prefer a dryer <laughs> rather than a towel warmer. Apparently, only... 0.5% of UK homes have air conditioning versus 87% of US homes. That's true. And that's crazy. I actually don't have air conditioning in my house in California. Pity Megan. I know, pity me. Again, yeah. first world problems. Yes. <laughs> that's a recurring theme of this episode. <laughs> Megan complaining about things. 
they don't have mailboxes here. Oh, yeah. So they just have, like, mm. letter boxes, which is kind of like a doggy door for mail. <laughs> right. There is no, you're right, traditional-looking like, mailbox. Yeah, like a sense. stick with, like, a mailbox with a little red flag that you put up when there's mail in it. Yeah. Well, one thing I do love over here is the postal code. So oh, yeah. It's unbelievable. So specific. I mean, so specific. And come on, it's six, seven letters and numbers. That's it. Mm. Yeah. Take you right to the door. It'll take you right to the apartment. You know, crazy town of London. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. If I could give you a six letter and number code, you, you would know. know exactly what street I live on. Whereas, like, in the States... You would know what mean. town or what section of the town I'm in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is, like... I guess a bit better for anonymity. If you're giving your address anyway. Well, no, like, so when I'm filling out, like, forms online or something for, like, oh, you want access to our Wi-Fi? Give us, like, your postcode and your email or whatever. I feel more comfortable doing it in the U.S. Yeah. Than I do in this country. Because I'm like, if I'm giving you my postcode, I'm telling you basically what block I live on. In the U.K., homes average at, like, a 1,000 square feet. And in the U.S., it's like 2.3 thousand. Yeah, it's what? unbelievable. I mean, you don't... We have so much more space. Mo, let's be honest. Have you ever paid for a TV license? We're sending this to the home office. No. <laughs> I'll be honest. I have not. But Has anyone? Time, I will say this. Well, I don't really know. I think, yeah, I think people have to. It's like part of the tax and stuff, isn't it? They send us like a little letter saying... They send you letters like all the fucking time. Yeah, saying yeah. you're going to have to pay for this TV license at some point. I remember freaking out the first time I got a letter. Yeah. Oh, we were freaking out too. Uh, but and then, then my all my British friends were like, oh, yeah. no one's going to come. Exactly. <laughs> they were like, they'll never come. They'll never check. We were just mad because we were like well we don't even use it we have a device that allows us to watch tv yeah, but just we netflix. have never used it yeah we all use netflix <laughs> i only know one person who was done for not having a tv license meaning they were caught and like given a fine or something because someone knocked at the door they answered the door and it was the tv license person he had the tv on and it was like on a commercial break or something oh and so like and it was like right in view of the door oh. so they got done for oh, it geez. which is so unfortunate Busted. yeah we just unplugged our tv because we were like if they come we will like just hide all the cords and because we're not going to use it anyway yeah that was way more effort than you needed to go through well this you is know when, now this yes. is when i was a silly american and i was like no they're gonna come for us and find us for something we don't even use yeah i was freaking out because it says on it like it's like a thousand pound fine or something yeah and then they like they also say how like someone's gonna come someone's gonna check i mean we can start with just the fact that the government still owns the television that's kind of yeah there if you really think about it that's true it is actually i mean Yeah. yeah i mean i always think about that kind of stuff because um you know, I, I think pretty soon we may be headed that way in the States in certain ways, you mm. know, depending on what happens. You know, so I'm always watching this kind of thing. Mm. Just a few more facts on the houses thing. AJ's really, really up with his facts right now. I am. So in the UK, semi-detached duplexes account for 20 per 7. 20 per 7? Uh, 20 per 7. Account for a 27 majority of all homes. 27 percent majority of all homes. 27% majority of all homes. There you go. I'll get it eventually. I'll edit it so it's as if I said it wow. correctly the first time. Um, and in the U.S., over 80% of homes are single-family detached. That's something that I've noticed. percent Yeah, yeah. Most people live in yeah. their own individual house in the U.S., and that's not at all the case here. Like yeah. standalone house. Yes. No. Although I'm living in one now. Ooh. Yes. Good on you. Thank you. I'm not. One thing that has been incredibly annoying uh, is that they don't have garbage disposals in the sinks here. Mm. And Do you use the garbage di- I disposal at home? I always use the garbage disposal. Yeah. See, I never did it, so I, I didn't even notice the difference the when I came here. And so when I came here, I was like, the fuck? <laughs> I have to yeah. use my hands to, like, fish out this shit that I thought that I was going to just, like, be able to get rid of? Because, like, if, if you're having a bowl of cereal or something, for example, and you don't, and with, like, bananas in it which i do often yeah i don't necessarily eat it all all the time i'm yeah. not always consistently the same amount of hungry yeah just um, wasting food yeah continue. yeah and so yeah i'll sometimes have to waste my food and i don't want to throw it in the bin because it's a liquid it's going to smell and it's right. gonna get yeah. all you know stinky in there <laughs> so i want to put it in the garbage disposal but then i don't have that option and i just stand there with my bowl and i'm like what 
What is the solution here? This has been first world problems with I like, know. <laughs> Sometimes I'll literally just take a plastic bag and I'll just like pour it into the plastic bag, tie the plastic bag, and then throw the plastic bag in the trash can. Yeah, I do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, but like it's such a waste of plastic. I'm already wasting food, so I feel bad about it. Now I've added another layer of guilt on top of it. So I just come away from my breakfast feeling, you know, full but deflated. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're a horrible person. I know. Do you use a food waste disposal? You know something? I'm going to tell you something, AJ, and this stays between us, right? <gasps> throw it on the, uh, <laughs> throw it in the plastic bag and throw it in the garbage. Where it, it, that's marked on top, no food products or whatever it says on top. I know, oh. it's so bad. Yeah. It's so okay, we won't bad. out you by putting that on the podcast. <laughs> don't, don't you worry. Um, Just me. <laughs> I got the TV inspectors coming. Yeah. Guys, garbage people. Everyone's coming for you. Everyone is upset with you. Have you ever noticed that, like, in the UK, there are, like, not as many, like, walk-in closets, so everything's just kind of, like, in a wardrobe? Yeah. 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 That's different. How weird is that? That's different. Yeah, you You lose significant space. Yeah, definitely. A lot of the houses were built in the Victorian era. Yeah, true. And so they would have, like, their fancy luxury wardrobes that they would have, like, shipped in from wherever. Yeah. For their fancy luxury homes. (laughs) Yeah, bring back the fancy luxurious wardrobes. Yes, please. Uh, Yeah, please. I miss them. <laughs> I mean, the wardrobes do feel a bit Narnia y, which is kind of fun. Yeah. That's the only, the only consolation is when you can associate yeah. it with a film and you can be like, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I can do, I can live. Because I, I associate <laughs> the word wardrobe with like, yeah, even Narnia or like um, Harry Beauty Potter. and the Beast. <laughs> oh, yeah, Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. And then I'm just thinking about all these things and I'm like, yeah, they're all not American. Yep. So. That makes yeah, sense now. Do you, can you imagine Beauty and the Beast set in America yeah. where the walk-in closet comes to life? <laughs> <laughs> How would that even work? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You know, the other thing I miss are the basements. Oh, yeah. Although, yes. Yeah, the West Coast. You know. Like, my childhood home has, like, a basement. <laughs> but apparently, like, the difference is a cellar is a basement that's just not, like, furnished or yes. anything. And then a basement is just, like, furnished and done nicely and yes. just a, a below-ground floor. Yeah, so that's a really good point, actually, the basements, because there are, like, no basements here. Yeah. Or swimming pools yeah, or hot I'm tubs. Coming from, yeah, swimming pools, hot tubs, miss those things. The basement of my Atlanta house was bigger than the house I had in L.A., just the basement. What? Like it had five rooms. Yeah, like five what? rooms. What? Studio. That's oh great. Oh, my God. Thank you so much, Mo, for being on the yeah, podcast. Yeah, thank you so much. Do you have any projects that our listeners should uh, look oh, out so for? Oh, so fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got an EP coming out. It's called Mo Elements of Pleasure. Ooh, yeah. So, yes. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this album then? Yeah, you know, I've been working on it for quite a while, and it's one of those, like, all right, I need to get this off of my hard drive. Mm. I, my first album was called Elements of Pleasure. Oh, oh, and, so it's... Mo elements of pleasure is like more elements of pleasure. Uh, yeah, I yeah, love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very clever. So, uh, okay, yeah, clever or corny, depending on how you look at no, it. No, I think it's um, clever. But, <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank we can also, I think yeah, it can so be so argued that it's both, but yeah. I think, I think just mostly okay. clever. Yeah, I haven't had, had any complaints yet. Good. But the, uh, <laughs> it's just like a continuation of like kind of what I did before, which was like um, a lot of my. Um, Musician friends and a lot of people that I've worked with are on the album. Like Roberta Flack is singing on the album. Oh. Philip Bailey. Yeah, Philip Bailey from Earth, Wind, and Fire, lead singer. He's oh. on, the album. on this one coming oh, out. Actually, this one coming <gasps> out, yeah. I've got a, a, a hit song by um, one of the Ex Temptations. His name is Ollie Woods. No. Oh my and, God. Uh, yeah. Who has since rest in peace? He's, he's actually moved on to the next plane. But, oh my God! Um, I still have this music that I haven't released yet. You know, and, uh, <gasps> that is and so special. Even Black is not singing anymore. So, um, you know, this would be one of the things that I, I was. Uh, Roberta is actually my daughter's um, godmother. So. She oh wow! Really, really oh wow! Really close. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to releasing this, this song. Uh, oh, that'll be amazing! Yeah. I'm so mm-hmm. excited to hear it. I didn't even know about uh, this. Yeah, oh. yeah, no, I I keep it a little bit quiet. You know, I just it's a 
I'm in so many projects now. It's like the last. Sometimes I go, oh, that's right, I got my own too. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I do things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I also have my own ambitions. Yes, exactly. AJ, you have a song coming out, don't you? I do have a song coming out. Yes. It'll be out on October fourth. It's called "I Can't Kiss You When I'm Sober." Hey yo. It's my third single. Oh, um, I love it. Yeah, thank you. I'm making some music with Mo, some Mo music with Mo, yeah. and hopefully it'll be available for the listeners' ears very soon. Find me on social media at I am Sola S O L A. I am Sola Music, and I am at AJ Marks Official. Mm-hmm. And uh, the outro for this episode is I can kiss you when I'm sober. Yeah, so you're gonna hear AJ's uh, single I can kiss you when I'm sober uh, right now. So enjoy. <laughs> hey, thank you guys. This was really a blast.